with you another video on the e-bike want to get this thing out and get riding it but i'm waiting to get all everything done on the bike i need done on it i gotta get my flat out in it i got to uh put my phone holder on it i gotta put my mirror on it my bell on it got some bags to put on it so i guess today's video i'm gonna show you how we get the flat out in this and I'll put on the items I need to put on, and I'll see what time it is here, and maybe get to do a little riding out there today. But today, we're going to put the flat out in, and I'm going to put the attachments i got to put on it, and hopefully i got time to get it out for a ride. Okay, right. we're about to try this install. I've never done this before in my life. Let's read the directions together. It says easy installation. This is flat out. If anybody's wondering what this is, I got to put 10 ounces of this in each tire. This stuff works really good from what I've seen. But the easy installation says rotate tire so the valve stem is near the top. Remove valve stem cap. Okay. Done it. Do not remove cap from this bottle. Pull up on the disc on top of cap until hose is fully extended. Let me see if you gotta shake this or anything. Okay, so it says pull up on this. Oh, there, I see there's a valve here. Oh, there we go. There we go, the cap is still on it. We're leaving that there for now. I think we gotta let the air out next, let's see. Use tool on bottom of disc to remove valve core oh it's got a tool on it well i bought a tool for that okay so we're going to go ahead and deflate this tire just the next step before i take this valve i'm gonna let some air out of it i gotta sit on the chair guys i'm an old man yeah it's going a little bit faster I can hear the tube deflating now. Bike is actually moving. I think now we could actually remove the stem. I'll do this from the other side. Hear more air coming out. Alright, she popped out. She popped out. I ain't got to watch because the bike wants to go over, so I'm going to have to prop this up, guys. Okay, the first mistake I made. I said rotate the tire so that the valve is near the top. I actually had it at the bottom, so I thought that's what you had to do. Just so I can get to it here. And when I did that, the kickstand stopped working. Wanted to knock the bike over, so I've got a prop with a couple chairs right now. Attach hose to the valve stem. Firmly squeeze bottle to install sealant. So we got to put 10 ounces in this thing. Remove this cap. This does have a valve tool on it, which is nice to know. And I'm going to see if it's got some kind of reader. Here's a reader. Make sure as you're putting this on the valve stand, you don't pop the valve stand. All right, we're going to start squeezing some of this in here. I put cardboard underneath this just in case it gets messy. do squeeze all the way back in there okay, I'll snug it up just a tad make sure it's snug 
All right, I got a tool for this. I bought just for this bike. There's bike. It calls for 30. I'm gonna put like 28 in it. 27.5 to start. Now we got air going back in the tire. We can go ahead and put the kickstand back up. Woo! That helped. needs a muffler. Now this is the first time I've ever done this guys, so if it looks awkward, it is. Okay. One tire done. So that was awkward. So lessons learned. First thing is make sure you got something proper your bike with before you start this because if you got it on the kickstand, once you let the hair out of the back tire that is the bike is going to want to fall toward you. So that's the first thing that should be done. Second thing is make sure this valve stem don't go up in there when you're pushing on it to get the valve out. And when you're pushing on it to uh, attach your uh, flat out to, and when you're pushing on it to attach your air pop to, because that's what it wants to do. You got to have a hand up there to hold it and a hand to put the bottle up. Of course, this hose on this is so short, I had to have three hands. So I'd have my wife come and help me because I couldn't hold the bottle up and uh, attach it at the same time while I'm trying to hold the, the valve. So that's what all that awkwardness was. But one, done, no problem. We're going to move okay, on to the next time one. Time to repeat the process on this side. I can't put it exactly straight up and down, you know, because of the forks. Letting the air out. I believe once you get this to the point where it's not going to pop out on you, you can start loosening this valve. We'll see how that works out. I still feel a lot of air. Come on, valve. It's starting to come out now. There we go. That's nice to know that you can literally, you know, if your valve gets loose, it's probably good to check them every once in a while to make sure they don't uh, come out. But that thing was almost all the way out and it was still holding air in. So if you got a super, if you got a super slow leak, it could be your valve causing it. Check them every once in a while, make sure they're in there tight. The valve is out, we're ready to pump some of this in now. If I can do this, it's hard to get it attached without the valve going up in. So you gotta get your hands on it. There, and get it up over it. There we go. Okay, I need to turn this in a way where I can see what's going on. And you just start squeezing it. This is the newer style flat out. This is supposed to be easier than the older style. I never used the older one, so I don't know. It's the first time ever doing something like this for me. Okay, I gotta get this down to where it's below the 16 here. I don't know of a way that you can be exactly precise with this. I gotta get a flashlight. Well, their little window to see here is not the best. I can't tell exactly where I'm at. 
I'm gonna put a little bit more in, we're gonna call it for now. Get your cap back in it so you don't lose it. Get your valve back in. All right, it's been pretty simple so far. I'm just gonna double check this, make sure I got this snugged up. Don't wanna strip it, but you don't want it too loose either. Take a post for guesstimating. We need to make it a little easier to see how much you're actually pumping in. All right, guys, that just goes to show I'm a complete noob. I haven't had a bicycle in over 35 years, a bicycle, uh, not to mention not having an e-bike. And I have never put anything like this in a bike tire before. This was my very first time pulling out a valve, out of any kind of vehicle. So you see how easy this really is. Anybody can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. I'm going to take this out for a test ride. My wife take a look and see how far this tire looks like it's squishing in when I sit on it. I put 27.5, it's recommended 30. So it's gotta be fairly close. If I need to put more in, I'll put more in it. I'm gonna take it out for a little spin and then we're gonna continue the video with putting the rest of the items on the bike. All right, first step done. I'm on my maiden ride here. See if this thing pulls up the hill. Holy mackerel. If you guys can see the steepness of this hill, I'm in pedal assist one. This thing just pulled right up like it's nothing. Wow. Gotta adjust my front brakes a little bit. Rear ones are good. Just wanted to ride this around the house. <laughs> at the moment. Oh, that's because I'm in both wheel drive. 
down a very steep hill. Down a very steep hill. Another one. <laughs> I'll put this back in. Okay, pedal assist one is actually zero, I think, on this. Let's see. Now it's going. Going in one. And where zero is. Man, that pulled right up that hill like it's nothing. That is a 45 degree hill right there. That is nuts. I did. Well, I didn't really mean to. Go in and uh. <laughs> stay right here. Okay, I gotta get this thing. I don't know why this doesn't go to zero. I'm still in both wheel. Here, hold on here. That's rear. Watch out, Jack. Get in the living room. Get off this thing for me. Holy mackerel. Did you wreck it? No, but that thing took off like a bat out of you know what. I wasn't expecting that. I haven't ridden a bike, guys, for 35 years, so. That was the first ride. I will say this right now. You don't have to be afraid of uh, this thing not having enough power. Because I got some of the steepest hills you're ever going to run into, and it pulled straight up them like it was nothing. So, pretty happy with the first ride. <laughs> Jackson, I wish you could ride this, buddy. Hi, guys. <laughs> Say hi, buddy. Hi. <laughs> All right. Outside with my first voyage, you'll see from the GoPro video, I was terrified. <laughs> And excited at the same time. A couple things I learned <clears throat> on this trip is I don't remember how to ride a bike, one, and I'm learning. The second is it's too tall for me. I've got this seat down as far as I can get it. So if anybody knows about a lower profile seat, I'll sacrifice comfort so that I can get my feet flatter on the ground. Right now I'm tipping. I would never worry about this bike as far as having power to get you up pretty much any hill. Because I went up some of the steepest hills there is with this, and it was just no issue at all. It's got all kinds of power. I was in both wheel drive, all wheel drive when I did it. So I think probably riding this most of the time in rear wheel drive is going to be plenty of power for most of your normal riding. I didn't get a chance to do the pedal. That's why I bought the bike for, for the pedal assist. So that'll be my next trip out. I'm still waiting for my helmet. I shouldn't even been out there. I was just trying to take it out there to get the uh, flat out mixed around in the tires. But once I got on it, I got excited and I just kept going. <laughs> Very exciting bike. So now we're getting ready to put on some things I need. And I was out there on the road, had a car come up behind me. Now, if I wouldn't have caught it out of my corner of my eye, I would have never known it's there. I had to use the old fashioned hand signals to turn into my driveway. This one's going to go right here, I hope. Hope this has a cap. I can put it in here find out if it don't if not then i'm gonna to have to get a different style and hook it on there i got a phone uh, holder i'm gonna put on there too i got a little bag here it's gonna sit on here i'm gonna cover up probably my w and my a at least yep it's gonna say lke when i'm done with it <laughs> i like it I like bike right and for the bike trail, jingle bell, so we don't have to scare him with that horn. That's what we're gonna do All now, right. guys. So, right off the get, I had to modify the end of my uh, rubber grip here to get this in. So I just cut out a little hole. Just careful not to make slices like that because then they'll just keep tearing. I cut a hole out so that I could actually get this in. Walkie has rubber grips on theirs. Squeeze that just a tad to get that in. There we go. Get the side where I want it. Before I tighten it up here. I get the tightening tool. There. I don't know if you can see this. I got GoPro on and I got my phone going. So I'm hoping one of these will capture it. I'm only putting one side on. Got enough things to worry about on this bike. I don't need two mirrors, I think. I just need one to see if there's cars coming up behind me. Because on my first maiden ride out here, 
guess what happened? <laughs> had a car come up behind me. I had to remember my hand signals. Come on, get in there. There we go. Had to remember the old hand signals. And I didn't die, so that's that. It's pretty tight. My, my back stays still now. Stay still, back. It's plastic, so I don't want to go too tight. That ain't coming out of there. Okay. Protective film. I'm hoping that whole thing's film. That's pretty foggy. Yeah, it is. I had to get started with a knife there. There, that's a lot better. What do we think of that, guys? Yep, it came out pretty nice. I think, actually, I didn't have to cut out such a big hole. I mean, there's no problem. It's completely covered. It looks good. But the hole I cut out, I probably didn't have to cut out quite so big. But you probably could go smaller than that, even, and it'll push in okay. Because, you know, flexible rubber. Okay, that part's done. That's the jingle bell. Let's go ahead and do the jingle bell. So we're going to go left side with it. Loosen your little handlebar holder here. Slip him right over. Drop the screw. Dropping the screw is optional. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. I would suggest not dropping it. Then you can get done a lot faster. All right, let's see if it works. Ha <laughs> ha! Coming up on the next rim. step. Phone. Phone holder. This is supposed to be the easiest insulation in the world. Because it's got a quick release. Hey, man, 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 man. Look at that. This goes here like so. This goes back over this the way you took it off. And now go the opposite direction and put it back on. I don't know exactly where I want it yet. I'm just going to put it there for now. And this has a tensioner here you got to loosen up so you can get it in there. And then first, uh, I believe the lock is on the top where we want the lock. Yeah, because you you have your USB port right there. I mean, that's gonna push on. There we go. Now, how much of this I'm able to pick up here on my GoPro if I come this side? It felt like I started smoothly, so we'll try again here. It's pretty simple. I just can't do things with my left hand as well. I think that's I want to be able to move it. I got it a little too tight, don't I? So I can adjust it. Gotta be able to adjust it on this ball. And this has got to be a little tighter. There we go. Put your phone in there like that. Pops in. I think I gotta go a little tighter. bumping so we want it to be pretty stiff put your phone in there one-handed get where you want it click that tight and this thing won't open adjust it currently so looks good does that look guys I'll make it symmetrical for now just for the picture I got my mirror Got my phone holder. I got my bell. 
I got my water bottle and I'm alone back here. <laughs> I guess you had to be there and know what that is. All right, one more step. I'm not positive on this one yet if I'm keeping it or not, but we're just gonna try it out here and see if I like it. What I don't like about it is they put their brand, which is an unpronounceable name in the United States, right there on the side. This to me just could have been plain. I'd have been happy, but it's not. So I may end up painting over that. I don't know. I don't even know if it'll fit on this bike. But we're gonna try it out. See if it does fit or not. It goes around the front like so. And that just Velcros back onto itself. Supposedly, I don't like how there's a whole bunch left over. I have to cut that off. But that's there. It's sitting at a kind of a weird angle, ain't it? And what I don't think I have is enough strap underneath it to reach. And I do not. So, this is designed more for the pole style bikes, pole frame. Yeah, I might be able to get that on there. Let me see. I'm trying to reach it. Oh, look at that. Good. I got that one on. It will fit. Put my tools right in there. Little tools. Put my phone there if I want. If I don't even want that on there, I can just go without it. Since I got a phone holder up here. But, you know, kind of looks neat on there. Well, I think that's going to do it, guys. We're going to take this off and walk around here a little bit. So, so far, they didn't send my freebies, so I still got just the seat on the back, which will probably never get used. My camel bag is supposed to be coming. That's what I was looking forward to, to hold stuff. But I can get some tools in here. I can get my phone in here. Some camera equipment, GoPro stuff I can put in there. Both sides of these saddlebags. Put a little bit in here if I want. I got my phone holder on here now. I got my jingle bell. I got my mirror on. There I is, all ugly and fat. Okay, I'm not unhappy. This bike is fast and powerful. And uh, I wasn't expecting that. I watch all these e-bike videos. You see people struggle getting up hills a little bit. Not so much this last year. The new bikes coming out are powerful. Most of them have the 750 watt motors. I went overboard with this and this would be a class three. This one's got 1200 watt in the back, 1600 watt peak, and it's got 1000 watt in the front with 1200 watt peak. And man, does it climb the hills. Pretty happy if you're on the fence about a walkie, H9 all wheel drive, they got this also and just the rear wheel drive. You can get this all wheel drive with a 40 amp battery. I think it's about 1699 right around there somewhere. And if you get it just rear wheel drive, it's even less. This is a well-built bike and it is a foldable bike. The only, this is my only regret so far is getting the 60 amp because I can't hardly sit on this thing. Probably a 40 amp would have been plenty and I could have put a 20 uh, amp hour, not amp, amp hour battery. I could have put a 20 amp hour battery in the uh, front. So I still would have had my 60. So if you're kind of short and you like this type of bike, go with the 40 amp hour. And if you need more, that 40 amp hour is gonna get you a long ways, guys. But if you need more, put 20, you put 20 more amp hours in the front there. They got a kit that comes with it. Really easy install kit that uh, you put in there with that battery. I've looked into that a little bit. Other for that, I'm liking it. I did my maiden ride, which was just a short one. I gotta get out here and start using the gears and such and the pedals, cause that's what I bought it for. That'll be my next ride. See y'all later, what do you say, buddy? Just die, night and down it, and then down on the potato bag. There we go.